everyone, my name is Ali and welcome to my channel. I get a lot of questions on how I charge shipping and how I package my orders. So I'm just going to explain everything step by step for you guys today. So let's start from the beginning. The customer buys a product from your shop and while they check out, they choose the shipping option and depending on where they live, it'll be a bit more expensive than other places. I personally use a company called Chit Chats. Uh, unfortunately, it's only available in Canada for the time being, but there's branches across Canada. So how it works is you just go onto the Chit Chats website, you log in, make an account, and then enter a bunch of addresses I just find on the website, starting from LA to New York, and as much time as I have, everything in between, and just kind of calculate the average of what it would cost to send an item. So since we're doing crochet, it's usually under a pound, so shipping shouldn't be too expensive. If it's under a pound, it'll be first class, which is a lot cheaper. But if it's over a pound, then it'll be priority. And the price jump is usually around like $8 to $13 Canadian. So it is a big gap, but luckily since we're crocheting, usually the items are pretty light. So you don't have to worry about that unless they order a lot. Once you have that calculated, you just want to go into your website if you have one and just enter the shipping weights. They usually have like customization options. So it can say to this region, for example, to Toronto, I want anything that weighs under a pound to be $10. Let's say that's the price. And then you can specify even more. In Calgary, I want it to be this expensive. In Vancouver, I want it to be this expensive. And so anytime your customer checks out, the website automatically takes account for the weight of the product and then it calculates the shipping accordingly. So I understand this might be a little tedious, especially if you want to ship worldwide, but just a tip for you guys, it can be a bit tricky to start shipping worldwide because a lot of things could go wrong with international shipping, especially now in the time of COVID. I've already gotten a couple packages that have been lost and of course I'm not just going to say, oh, here's a refund because the customer wants their product. So I ended up having to make it again, which is such a big hassle, but of course it's, but of course it's part of the process. You have to expect it. So make sure you buy insurance just in case that happens. So in terms of shipping, you'll gain some money and you'll lose some money, but in the end, in theory, it should even out. Websites and like Etsy and different platforms should have an automatic shipping calculator as well, I think, um, depending on your weight. So if you want to just go with Canada Post and it'll just do it automatically, uh, that's up to you. But definitely if you live in Canada, it is worth your while to go with Chit Chat. It's a lot cheaper and it's catered towards small businesses, so it'll help you out. And if you want to sign up, I have a link down below. I believe it's an affiliate link. So now let's get into packaging. Once you got the shipping all figured out and you have your label ready to go, now you wanna add your labels to the product for branding and for marketing and advertising. It automatically makes your products look a lot better. So what I start off with is after I finish crocheting my product, I like to sew on a satin label. And I got my labels from an Etsy shop in Quebec called Schmlabels. I'll leave all the links down below, but he was very helpful, did exactly what I wanted. You just choose the sizing of your label if you want it like folded or you want the tags enfold, I think it's called. And you just send him a PNG of your logo and he'll have it done in no time. So I ordered about 200 and that is way too much for me at least. Like I do not... I have not gotten 200 orders yet, at least for my crochet items yet. So definitely went overboard with that. I was just trying to get free shipping, but I don't suggest you just get 200 right away. Maybe start with 50. That's a good, like, reasonable number. <laughs> and after I sew it on with some white thread, I like to wrap it in tissue paper. I just got mine from the dollar store, so you can basically find it anywhere and I just wrap it. Um, if you have any tips on wrapping it nicely, let me know. Someone did comment once how to look more professional, but I didn't really understand the comments, so leave your tips down below and help us all out. I just use regular scotch tape to tape it up, and then I like to add a little sticker, but now I don't actually peel the sticker off of the, the paper just because I want them to be able to reuse it, and I was wasting a lot of stickers that way, so I actually just put like double-sided tape on the back of the sticker and just stick it on uh, the seam to make it look nice and neat. 
And I got my stickers from Jukebox Prints. They are such high quality, sturdy stickers and I recommend them 100%. I'll also leave that link down below so you can check it out for yourself. They come in a lot of different custom sizes and can basically do anything you want. They can like cut it into custom shapes and it's just very versatile for your brand. They even have business cards, so make sure you go check them out. Of course, the best part of every small business is having a thank you card. You always wanna thank your customers, especially if they're going out of the whim to purchase from your small business. Just having that nice little touch is so important. So I designed my own cards a while ago. I printed it on my own printer and definitely you can go get them done. You can use jukebox prints again. And I also have my own business cards that I designed myself as well. I bought um, Avery business card templates from Staples and I tried to print them out myself, but they did not turn out that well. I think I'm gonna get them professionally done soon. And after you have that done, you wanna package it all in a poly mailer. I suggest poly mailers because crochet items are not fragile and they can be tossed around, it doesn't really matter. And this is the cheapest way because it's the lightest form of packaging rather than a box. If you want to be fancy and use a box, go ahead, but I just like to keep things simple. I got a pack of 100 9 by 12 poly mailers from Amazon. And lastly, you need to print out your postage and you can use a just regular printer and paper and just like tape it on that way. Or if you want a more professional look, I want to thank Movin. They sent me a small little handy dandy thermal label printer. So it makes things way more convenient for me rather than having to print it off and tape it on each time. This was the printer I was sent. Here I'm just feeding the labels through the printer until the light on the top turns green. And you can download a drive onto your computer and this will connect the move-in printer to your computer and you can just print it and it makes it very convenient for you to print out your postage it was very easy to set up and i'm very happy with how it turned out i also asked you guys on instagram if you had any specific questions you want to know so i'm just going to answer those now Someone asked cost for materials and to ship. In the beginning, when you don't get as many orders, you do have to kind of take that leap and invest in supplies. Try to buy them in lower quantity, so just in case you don't get as many orders as you expect, there's not a lot of money wasted and start small. You know, if you want stickers, you can print them at home and like business cards, you can print them at home. So make everything more home-based in the beginning and once you get more orders, you can start investing in the better quality supplies and products. Someone also asked, do you recommend giving extras? So I know a lot of small businesses give like candy and little things and I think that's such a good touch. I personally just like to package it cutely and just like add, you know, business card, thank you card. I think that is enough, but if you want to add extras, it will definitely make the customer appreciate it more. They also asked, should I buy thank you cards? Like I said before, I personally made them myself and you can find so much inspiration online. So I do think in the beginning, you can definitely just design your own and you don't have to buy any. Another person asked, how does international shipping work? I've heard that it's complicated, but don't know how. So I did mention international shipping briefly, but it is a different ball game. If it gets there, perfect, done, but there is a higher chance that it'll get lost due to like the distance it has to go. So I think that's the main complication behind it. It will be like slightly more expensive, but other than that, it's pretty similar to domestic shipping. You just got to make sure you warn the customer and your policies that there may be custom fees and it's out of your control, so make sure you just communicate that so people aren't surprised when they get the product. If you have any more tips for packaging, make sure to leave them down below. We would all love to know. I hope this video helped you guys out. I know figuring out shipping can be a little tricky, so it just takes a lot of practice and learning. Sometimes you may overcharge, sometimes you may undercharge, but that's just all part of the process of learning how to run a business. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye.